53-man roster projection. Almost time for it to be set. Coming up in just a few days, we will know who the Seattle Seahawks will have on the field to begin week one against the Los Angeles Rams. And here on Seahawks Today, we are going to go through all 53 spots and tell you who we expect to hold those spots after this second preseason game. So without further ado, let's start with the quarterback position. I think the Seahawks are going to carry two quarterbacks. Geno Smith and Drew Locke should be able to hold those spots. Uh, Holton Naylor's uh, has impressed in the preseason, but I think he's going to be fine on the practice squad. I think that he'll hang around there in that role, and if something were to happen to Geno or Drew Locke, then uh, I would guess the Seahawks would be more than comfortable with the idea of uh, promoting him to the uh, – the active roster if something were to happen, if that were the case. But uh, as far as these two quarterbacks go, real quick, Geno has been fantastic this offseason. He's done everything that's been asked of him and then some. I think Geno is going to play even better in 2023 when you factor in how much better the talent is around him, comparably speaking to a season ago when You look at the guys like Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet and JSN. If Geno plays the level he did last year, uh, then those numbers will just improve just based on having better players around him. Meanwhile, with Drew Locke, Drew Locke, I think personally, and I feel like most people feel the same way, I am much more comfortable with Drew Locke right now than I was at this time last year. Drew Locke's not going to be your starting quarterback. He slides into that number two quarterback role, and if something were to happen to Geno, Drew Locke has shown that he knows how this offense operates, uh, that he can go through the motions and do what it takes to keep this offense running smooth. He knows the playbook, run effectively. Drew Locke can do a good job if his name's called. Quarterback position's fine. The backfield for Seattle. Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, DJ Dallas, Kenny McIntosh will be your running backs. Uh, I think the Seahawks have invested too much in DJ Dallas to uh, move on from him, although I do like Sir Roderick Thompson. I could see Thompson get promoted maybe later on if there's an injury or something to the running back uh, active roster. But for now, I think Thompson probably slides in the uh, practice squad spot. Nick Ballore, of course, as well at the fullback position. Wide receivers. Now this is where things get interesting. Uh, My opening day wide receivers. I think Seattle carries five. I think it's DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, JSN. I expect JSN to be healthy and back for week one. Jake Bobo makes the roster. I think he's a lock at this point. Barring something catastrophic happening of some sorts, Bobo is a lock to make the roster and could very well be that number four receiver. And then Cody Thompson, I think, holds the other spot. You got guys like Young uh, and Kay Johnson and others that are competing, but I think it's going to be these five for now. Bobo, the undrafted UDFA out of UCLA, was previously at Duke, has been nothing short of spectacular in this preseason as uh, he's led the Seahawks in receiving Uh, Former third-team All-ACC selection. He's not the fastest guy by any means, but he does a really good job of getting open. He uses his size, his athleticism. Jake Bobo has been a great addition for the Seattle Seahawks. Credit to the Seahawks scouting department for finding Jake Bobo, and credit where credit's due for what they've done. And watch out, his best football is still ahead of him. All right, so here's what I want to know. Pick one to keep. I told you, I think Cody Thompson gets that last receiver spot. Is Lindsey going to make it? Is Young going to make it? I mean, heck, we can even throw in Kay Johnson in there as well. Let me know in the comments section who should be the one to get that spot. I already have Jake Bobo getting one spot. Who gets the last spot? Chime in in the comments section, weigh in, and tell me who you think is the last receiver or two to make the Seahawks roster, let us know in the comments section. You know, folks, I'm always talking about my Twitter or Instagram, but I know that we still have a lot of people that use Facebook. And the reason why I know that is because you guys are sending me messages or commenting or liking on my Facebook page. And I got Facebook updates as well. You can follow me at Tyler Jones Live, facebook.com slash Tyler Jones Live for updates there. I understand not everybody's got Twitter and all that, but 
give me a follow over on Facebook. I'm close to 1,000 followers on Facebook. I need 36 more of you. So head over to Facebook. If you still got a Facebook account, go over there, give me a follow for more Seahawks content. Certainly would appreciate it. Help me get to 1,000 followers for more Seahawks coverage. To the tight end position, three tight ends for Seattle. I think Noah Fant, Will Disley, and Colby Parkinson hold down those spots for the Seahawks. All should play pretty similar roles within the Seahawks offense. You should see some two tight end sets from time to time as well. Watch out for the uh, tight end position. It's pretty decent, actually, uh, with these three. The offensive line, five guys to watch on this end of things. And then I got some more to get to as well. Cross, Lewis, Olu, uh, Phil Haynes, Abraham Lucas, those guys I have making the roster. I'm very excited to see what Cross and Lucas are going to do in year two as the bookend tackles for the Seattle Seahawks. Those two, uh, I think, should take a big step in the right direction. I mean, sure, Charles Cross was a top ten pick last year, but Abraham Lucas was the better of the two. Both of them are going to be exciting to see what they do this season. Also on the list, Evan Brown uh, should be your starting center, although he does have experience at the guard spot. So if they need to shift some things around, we could potentially see Evan Brown play some guard. Uh, Jake C., Stone, and then Anthony Bradford. Anthony Bradford's a little bit of a project. He's shown some glimpses, but I don't expect Anthony Bradford to be starting at least day one. As far as Olu goes, and I am going to continue to applaud the scouting department of the Seahawks throughout this show today because Olu was a fifth-round pick, and this was a guy that was the best center in all of college football last year, Olu Oluwatimi, and somehow fell to the fifth round. Played at Michigan, was at Virginia before that, as well as Air Force. And you talk about the impact this guy's made already. In his preseason debut week one, you know how many pressures he allowed? Zero. Not a single one. This guy won the Outland Trophy, uh, was the Remington Award winner, was a consensus All-American. Olu's legit. And he might not start week one, but if something happens, if there's an injury or some sorts, Olu's going to be ready to go. I'm very confident, and to be honest, no offense to any Evan Brown truthers out there, but this guy's the future. Evan Brown's kind of the temporary placeholder of sorts. Olu's going to be your starting center for years to come. I'm all in on Olu Olu with team. Pick a starting center. Does Olu find a way to win the job, or does Evan Brown do so? Weigh in. Tell us in the comments section. Type Olu for Olu. Type Evan for Evan Brown. Let us know what you think. Who is the starting center for Seattle? Weigh in in the comments section and let me know. Cutdown day just around the corner, and here's what's going to happen on cutdown day. Some of you might be sad with some of the decisions the Seahawks make. Others are going to be like, you know what? I didn't like that guy anyway. I'm glad he's gone. And what we're going to do is we are going to put a video and react to the cutdowns, to the decisions that Pete Carroll and John Schneider make. So as soon as we know the cuts and what the 53-man roster is officially like coming up next week, we are going to bring you uh, full coverage here on Seahawks Today. So go ahead and subscribe now. That way you don't miss our watch party this weekend, but also so you know right away what the 53-man roster looks like for your Seattle Seahawks. Subscribe now for free. Turn on notifications. Stay alert of what's going on as the Seahawks get things going with a cutdown day coming up next week. Subscribe now. You will not want to miss it. We'll have you coming. To the defensive line we go now. And things are going to be interesting with this defensive line. Jaron Reed, of course, at nose tackle. Cameron Young is there. And then Draymond Jones, Mario Edwards, Mike Morris, and Miles Adams hold the defensive end spots. And although there are some concerns, we're going to be real with you all, and that's what we do here on Seahawks today, there are concerns with this defensive line, in particular the interior of the defensive line. Although the concerns are there, it sounds like the Seahawks feel confident. They're okay with what they have, that they're going to roll with these guys, that it's going to be this group. And I got to tell you, they're going to need a lot out of Jaron Reed. Jaron Reed's in his second stint in Seattle, spent four seasons with the team previously from 2016 to 2021. Uh, The last couple teams he played with, the Packers and the Chiefs, he was 
at that defensive end spot, now moving over to the nose tackle position, he's got his work cut out for him. It's not going to be easy, but the Seahawks are going to be asking a lot of Jaron Reed. They are going to need this guy to play at a high level, in particular when it comes to run defense, which has been a big weakness for this Seahawks team. Jaron Reed's got to be able to hold his own and do a good job. The edge rusher spot. A lot of excitement with these edge rushers here. Yuchenna and Wosu, he got paid. He's going to be back. Daryl Taylor uh, also coming off a season of nine-plus sacks. Daryl Taylor not going to be your starter, though, more than likely. That belongs to Boye Mafe, who Pete Carroll has called the most improved player this entire preseason. Derek Hall, the rookie out of Auburn, has been really good. Tyreek Smith, second-year player of Ohio State. He led Seattle in tackling in the second preseason game. He's a force to be reckoned with. And then there's Levi Bell. Yes, Levi Bell. Where did this guy come from? Played for the Michigan Panthers of the USFL after he was undrafted out of Texas State. And in six games in the USFL, he had four sacks. That was tied for the 10th most in the USFL. And... You talk about the impact that he's brought to the Seahawks team, just coming out of nowhere, riding the momentum from the USFL against Dallas of all defensive players, every single one. He was the highest graded defensive player with an 89.5 overall grade and an 86.1 pass rush grade. Levi Bell, incredible story. And if he has another good game against Green Bay, which I have no reason why to think he wouldn't, Levi Bell's going to be on your roster. I think Levi Bell's got a great shot. He's in position to make the 53-man roster. I mean, this was nowhere on anyone's radar when camp began, but here we are. So, start the making. What do you guys think? Will Levi Bell make the Seahawks 53-man roster? I think he will. I did not have this guy making the 53-man roster a couple weeks ago. He came out of left field. What do you think? Levi Bell on the 53-man roster. If you think he is, type Y for yes. If not, you think it's somebody else, type in for no. Let us know what you think. Y for yes, in for no. Seahawks fans, I got something for you. You've been watching the last couple Seahawk games. You're going to watch Saturday's game against the Green Bay Packers. And One thing you're going to notice is different players, coaches, personnel staff wearing the Seahawk hats that you see on your screen right now. Whether it's the ball cap style, the flat bill, the throwback. And the good news is that we have these same hats available for you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You can get the same hats that your favorite Seahawks are wearing, and it's all in one place. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats to get yours today. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats. You are going to love these folks, I'm telling you. And there's more beyond just these three. We're showing you a few different options here, but there's others as well on our website. So after the video finishes, go ahead and head over to chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats and get yours now. You're going to love these hats. You get in time for football season. You'll be rocking with your hawk out, be looking good. You look good, you feel good, you play good, as they say. Get yours now while supplies last. Right in time for football season. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks hats. The inside linebacker room. Seahawks got some good news that Jordan Brooks was off the pup list. We weren't expecting eight months ago, coming off of an ACL, that he'd be ready for the start of the season. But sure enough, he is. Uh, BBK, also I have making this. John Radigan, Devin Bush, Bobby Wagner, of course. Vi Jones uh, misses because of Jordan Brooks coming back, but expect him to stick around in the practice squad and potentially uh, waiting for his phone to ring if there's an injury or something. To the corner position we go. Now this is where things start to get a little interesting. I don't think that Artie Burns makes the roster for Seattle. I think Artie Burns is done. And with Jamal Adams coming back, I think, in theory, you slide Kobe Bryant back to the corner position. And, I mean, he'll play both. He'll play corner and safety as well, just wherever the Seahawks need him. Mike Jackson and Rick Woolen are your two outside corners. Uh, Devin Witherspoon starts in the nickel. Trey Brown on, out there as well. This is a really good, deep cornerback room for the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm excited to see what the Mamba mentality of Kobe Bryant's going to be in 2023. He has had a very good preseason and, and really good camp. 
Started all 17 games as a rookie last year with six starts. And the flexibility that he provides to be able to change up things for Seattle, playing both corner and safety. Watch out for Kobe Bryant here, folks. I think you're going to like what you see from Kobe Bryant. And uh, he's impressed me to this point. Very curious how they make this work, uh, what role he necessarily plays. But think about this. As much talk as there was about Reek last year, uh, you know, being a pro bowler, leading the league in interceptions, Kobe Bryant was picked before Reek was. Kobe had a good rookie year last year. He just wasn't a Pro Bowl caliber <laughs> like Reek was. Kobe is going to be impressive, too. Don't sleep on Kobe Bryant and what the Seahawks do with him defensively. The safeties, Jarek Reed, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, Julian Love. These three, I think you'll see the three high safety look uh, at times. Uh, Joey Blunt, of course, is injured right now, but he'll be back at some point. Um, this is going to be a fun group. And the flexibility that it provides to work with, Maybe you see times where Jamal Adams lines up at linebacker, but nonetheless, getting Jamal Adams healthy, being able to have some flexibility with this defense. We mentioned Kobe Bryant, a part of the mix as well. Look out. And I really hope that Jamal Adams is back to playing at a high level that we know he's capable of, a Pro Bowl caliber player, right? We haven't seen a whole lot of Jamal Adams. 21 games in total he's missed the last two seasons. Returning from that torn quad, Three-time Pro Bowler in 2018 and 2020. Can he be that same player he once was? I sure hope so. They're certainly paying him a lot of money to hopefully be the player that he was a couple of years ago as far as that goes. Last but least. See what I did there? The special teams unit. No surprises. Jason Myers, Michael Dixon, a uh, very good one-two punch. Rookie Chris Stoll. I'll be honest, I don't know much about long snappers, but Chris Stoll was rated the top long snapper in college football last year at Penn State. He'll hold that spot. And there you have it. That is your 53-man roster for the Seattle Seahawks in 2023. What do you think? How would you grade the Seahawks roster? What do you think of this roster the Seahawks are going to put together in 2023 in my projections? Grade it for me in the comment section, A, B, C, D, or F, and let me know what you think about the Seahawks roster. As always, hit me up on social media. Facebook in particular today. I want to get to 1,000 followers, but I need your help. Follow me there at Tyler Jones Live for more Seahawks updates. And I'll see you next time on this very program, Seahawks Today. 